Okay. Hey everybody, welcome back to another uh, another edition of uh, Garage uh, Scale Studio Modelers. Um, here, I'm Dave Forrest and I'm here with my good friend Harvey Lowe. And today uh, we're going to actually do some airbrush work and I'm going to do some camo on the uh, 251 uh, Stuka Zufus that we talked about a couple of episodes back. Uh, this is the Dragon Kit that I was complaining. Still doing some green, I see. No. Are you on the red? Are you the yeah, red I'm, just red? I'm just cleaning this out. Now, is that red, red camo, is that the same as the primer red brown? No. Different. Okay. Different. Yeah, the primer red brown is a lot more red. Just uh, blow this back. Again, you're going to be spraying other colors through there, so you don't have to do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to clean your airbrush. Just keep spraying until the green is all gone. You got it. Okay. Yeah. So she's more or less green free. So let's get some work going on the red brown. Going on the red brown. Okay. So we'll get a few. Be careful. So again, just a few drops. Actually, you take the cap off now. I can smell it. Yeah. This this stinks. Yeah, I, I don't know how if the readers uh, do this, but do you guys use a um, air purifier or anything like that when you? You know, in the areas where you spray, I, I, I don't well, I, yet. No, I don't. I always have a um, yeah. open window. Well, an open window, and I have the the paint that the the it all right. 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 So I, this might, I might get an air. I've been doing three D resin printing, and that stuff smells. So I might get. Oh, does I might get an air purifier. Yeah, we'll, we'll maybe do an issue for a, sure. Yeah. Episode on three D. Yeah, printing. I'm intensely curious on that. Yeah, yeah. So let's put this this out of. And I guess our focus on 3D printing for some future episode will be about uh, military modeling as opposed to the, the figures, which are quite well covered. So we'll think about that. I've got to learn how to paint figures. <laughs> take, it's always a take, challenge. Take Steve up on his offer. Yeah. Well, you know, while we're talking about that, uh, I don't know about you, Dave, but I, I like to, to dibble in ships and aircraft. I think, I think it's just gives you an appreciation and increases your skills overall as a modeler. Agreed. I'm even working on a, on a car. I'm sorry guys, we don't do a lot of cars on this channel, but maybe that'll change because I'm working on a, a couple of F1 cars for some clients and uh, the, uh, the gentleman is interested in, in uh, Ayrton Senna's car, so maybe I'll do something on cars, but I am primarily a military subject matter affectionate. And now I'm just going to add a little bit more. More thinner? more thinner just because for whatever reason out of the bottle the red's a little bit thicker than the green be curious in the comments if you guys in where you are from whether you have access to mr. color leveling thinner because I know uh, we're in Canada and we're blessed to be able to have access to a lot of these products from uh, from Asia but I know sometimes in the in other countries they're a little bit yeah harder it can be a little get. bit yeah yeah we're pretty good. But you can, uh, yeah, if you can get the Tamiya, I mean, I guess it's the same, coming from the same place. Yeah. But the Tamiya stuff is good. Tamiya stuff's good. Yep. The yellow cap is just the regular thinner, orange cap is with the retarder. Yeah, the retarder makes a big difference. There's a blue cap now. Is that the enamel thinner? I forget. There's a blue cap, Tamiya thinner. I think it's their enamel, I can't remember. You're kind of thinning it to the consistency of low fat milk. Low fat milk. Yeah. Do I drink low fat milk? I don't know what I drink. Do you drink any milk? I do. I drink the uh, lowest fat milk you can get. That's all Carolyn buys. But after a while, you get. It's funny. You're gonna, you get used to stuff. Like I, I can't drink. Oh, is that right? Different, higher fat content. There we go. Looks, there we go. That looks good. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is just go back over and again follow the the pattern here. It's much the same way we did with the green, but now we're doing it with the red. So I'm going to start. So while while you're doing that, um, I do find with older paints. This is my little tip for you. I know you're mixing it right in the cup, but older paints I tend to strain them through uh, pantyhose. Uh, just to get all the old chunks out, because sometimes it does happen. Stir your paint, uh, but then I, I filter it through, especially the older paints, right? But that it kind of wastes the paint if if you've got a you know if you're just doing a little bit of work. But just be careful if you've got an older tin of Tamiya or AK to do kind of settle. 
Yeah, that's true enough. And it just takes a few... A few bits to yep. really gunk up the airbrush. Yep, and all of a sudden you got a splatter and then that's the... Whip the model at the wall? No, I'm just kidding. You can always fix this. Yeah, you can. Now, in real life, was there there was no order in which they applied these stuff, right, Dave? Like, did they care whether the red brown was first or the green? I don't think no. so. I think it's whatever the crews, whatever was convenient yeah. for the crews at the time. That's really looking sharp. I noticed that you go for a nice contrast in colors because the the weathering will tone them. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So don't be uh, too afraid, uh, viewers, to over uh, accentuate the model in terms of the, the vibrancy of your colors because those will be toned down when you weather. Got it. Exactly right. So we'll do another swap here. relaxing right very until you get the splatter effect until you get wheels that don't align then is it then is it relaxing david is it tell me no that's not relaxing. that's not relaxing. but this is i find this very relaxing it's looking great nice tight finish it's looking german yeah it, definitely it does, does look, look german it now. definitely does have that german look and feel to it um yeah so maybe we'll just Continue building up. That's a nice. Uh, that's a, what you mentioned it early in the video. But what? It's the AK Red Brown, whatever that. Yeah, it's the what is it? The zero six seven. Mm. There's a there's a bunch of like they have different color. Like a bunch ah, more brown. Right. This is kind of a nice mix between the brown and the red, and then they have like a or one that's very red, which is really I think meant to be their, their red primer, which is which is a nice color. You know those colors look. These could also be used in Japanese vehicles for sure. I'm looking at that. That green, that's definitely could be used on a Chiha, the red, brown, used in some earlier Japanese vehicles in the 30s. You don't always have to use the German color for German vehicles. I've got a few more drops of thinner because I'm getting a little bit of overspray. Be interested in from the viewers if you if you are all doing these multi-cam vehicles, how how long does it take you to do a whole vehicle? Right. These generally are quicker compared to some of the Italian colors. I'm proposing to be starting a uh, Italian AB40 armored car, and this thing's got a got a camo pattern like da vinci it's like so complex so no oh, really yeah wow. i don't know what the italians love the the gaudiness of their of their camouflage patterns there we go now we're back on track what'd you do just add more thinner yeah i just like i was starting to see some splatter some a little bit of splatter and mm -hmm. overspray and just mm -hmm. because the low air pressure when the paint's too thick yes right. right right there you go so just a you know just a quick adjustment and then we're back on track So it's also got good lighting here, so you can see what you're doing. Yeah. We've got these, uh, what are they called, LED lamps in, in the garage here. I picked mine up at uh, Costco, and they're, they're like three LED bulbs that you screw into the uh, into your socket. They've got an extension, but they're incredibly bright. So I would suggest you guys do that. I mean, I know that some people spray with a magnifier, but I love these these large LED lamps that you, that you can get at the hardware store. And you can adjust the uh, brightness on them by flicking the switch quickly back and forth. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're, they are. They're very... And it actually warms the room in the winter. So we're, we're in a garage right now in the deep winter, but he's got heating in here, but they certainly help. Thank goodness we have heating in here. Yeah. Well, we're Canadians, right? Oh, well, we are. But we still like to keep warm. Yeah. We're not in Southern California. So again, just working, you know, kind of generally following the, the instructions. Following but not following, I guess. That doesn't look anything like the instructions here, David. What are you doing? 
I'll give you a, a tiny bit. That's ridiculous. That's looking great. That's getting there. Now, your choice of not doing the wheels is purely because some of them were not camouflaged, correct? Correct. But you could. Oh, yeah, you could, sure. And some of them were. You know, so you could, just for, for added interest, I suppose you could do one or two wheels, Kevin, and leave the rest for just interest. Yeah, maybe. Right? Yeah. It's a good thought. Just like, right? did, just like having a different colored crate, yeah. right? Because I find if you do that, like I, I think I might have said this in an earlier video, the longer you have the viewer's eye on a model, I think the more successful you are in your model, because it means that it's telling a story. And it's telling multiple stories. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And that's what you want to do with your model. You want to add a little detail, a little helmet, a little this, a little that. It's telling a story. That's Correct. really looking sharp. Yeah, it's getting there. Now, did you do those tracks? Are those tracks painted yet? Are they? Uh, they're just primed and just oh, have okay. some of the overspray. Okay. And did you put the track? Did you glue the tracks off first and just paint the tracks? Yeah, everything on. With? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Do you I'm ever, doing, I find I'm doing that more and more now. Yeah? yeah. I still don't do that. I do the, but it is time consuming. You do the do the wheels and put the tracks on. It is time consuming. Sometimes you have to, right? Like because, or you're painting everything in sub assemblies. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned, viewers. I'll be back to my Sheridan. I know we kind of go back and forth on this channel, so that's the way we are. But we always uh, finish what we start, so I'll be uh, finishing eventually. Up. Yeah, eventually. Eventually, yes, we get there. Sheridan. Maybe that one. I'll do a modulation exercise on it. We'll try to do it within the, the timing of the episode. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that'll be a nice. Be, I'm looking forward to seeing how that turns out. Right? Well, I'm not, I'm not a, a Vietnam vehicle um, expert by any means, but we'll see when we get there. Not bad. Yeah, getting there. It's starting to look like a... It's, it actually looks excellent. Yeah. So it's... And notice you're, you're so fine spraying that you don't even have to mask off the inside of the vehicle, which was... No. That's just a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're controlling it. Yeah. Good, so. Yeah. Yeah, that airbrush is three to five millimeters from the surface. Yeah, five millimeters tight. tight. Now, now in contrast, um, I, I don't know whether we can get this on the video, but I'm working on a one two hundred Yamato for fine scale modeler, um, and uh, the table's not big enough for that. No, hard. the garage no. isn't big enough for that. And I'm using a for the paint the overall gray. It's like a point five nozzle. It, it's completely different airbrushing. You're not in that close. You're using a very, very wide nozzle. I'm sure be, you should try and get it on if we can. Yeah, yeah, we'll... Uh, if that works, maybe. We could try we'll it, see. yeah. It's almost done. It's been a four-month journey, and, you know, I want to keep the integrity of, of, of the model for the purposes of the article, but, yes, perhaps we could show a teaser of it. The fine skill said that would be fine, so we could perhaps do that when it's finished and show you what it looks like before the article comes out, which hopefully will be early 2023. Oh, I'd love to see that. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Hmm. Now, now again, your your sequence of colors is green, then, then the red-brown. You can easily flip it the other way around, and it just gives a variation in in your sure, pattern, sure it'll look could. it'll look different. But that's up to you, right? Exactly. Tell her you want to kind of approach it. I can see the uh, the love of German army. We've got that. We've got all that variation. Yeah, it is. Uh, that does that is starting to come together. And again, it looks it looks pretty stark at this. Uh, it looks good, but it looks that's pretty great. stark. Yeah, but, but that's but, what you, know, you want. Well, there'll be filters and weathering and streaking. And so, Robert, how long have we been filming now? About about an, an hour. Forty-two minutes. Forty-two minutes. We're gonna have to break this episode down, but it's live, 
and uh, he's been at it for 42 minutes. Has it been 42 minutes? All right. Yes. Yes. Wow. And he's already so yeah, forty two minutes. You're Doesn't seem even like with our banter, you're you're what, three quarters of the way through? Yeah. Almost almost. Yeah. Almost done just with that. So you can see how you can actually do this in one night's sitting easily. Of course when I do this I play videos. I watch YouTube, I watch all sorts of modeling videos, so... That's what, oh, that's looking great. Yeah, I just, I just, I mean, this will get hidden by one of the crates, but... Yeah. Oh, no, could, you could leave a crate off, could you not? Would that be accurate? Yeah, you could. Yeah. But it would, uh, it might muck with the lines of the vehicle. A yeah. Bit, right? Mm -hmm. Don't muck with the lines of the model. I know some aircraft modelers don't like the uh, open open panels on engines because it ruins the lines of the aircraft. Oh, it depends what you're. Yeah. Depends what you're up for, right? So just building up the color very slightly, very controlled. Back to the kit. When was this kit released? Do you remember? Probably what? No, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, years, was, I mean, 15 it, years maybe? At least, well, or even longer. Mm -hmm. Like, I think the bones of this go back some time, but they've added, they've made a lot of subsequent releases and improved some of the parts. And It's still newer than the Tumia kit. Uh, or roughly the same. I know the FB yeah, club's yeah, recent. Yeah, it probably is. You're probably yeah. right. Yeah, the yeah. FB club's fairly recent. I'll have to go into scale mates to check yeah. the image of it. Yeah. I think there's still a, a bit of an interest in taking an old kit and making it look really, really neat. Yes, there is. For sure. I think my first, one of my first models was a 135th Hanomag, but I think it was a re -E. I can't remember. It was like, I was in grade six at school when they allowed, when they allowed kids to bring uh, toxic paints to school. We, we a grade six teacher used to allow us to have build models during class as a hobby thing. I don't think they do that. That anymore. is awesome. That, right? They don't do that anymore. I don't think I don't, the kids I don't, are yeah, I don't know, but. interested. But yeah, we all we all brought our paints, and there was no airbrushing back then. But we built our mind in a handle mag, and they did a American half track. Those are the days. Uh, simpler times. Simpler times. Yeah. Here I'm just following. Right, you're you're following the lines of the other color. You're yeah. overlapping. You're doing whatever you want to do. Yeah. See, this is your artistic eye coming out, right? I mean, where the patterns go. That's really looking sharp. Yeah, it's getting there. It's almost, it almost takes longer to do the second color because you're then you have to kind of worry about the first color. Right. Whereas yeah, with the oh, first color, it's a just, clean palette. You're just kind of going right. So I, one thing I've noticed. You mean you don't want to you want to punch up your colors? You don't want to. Well, you just have to be a little bit more um, more attentive. Mm. And again, there's nothing to say that you can't go back and adjust and play and correct. And now you guys note that we're kind of doing this model as the cameras roll. We're a bit different here, so uh, I know it's it's kind of taking longer. And but that's what we do here. We don't we don't take breaks in the modeling, and we just do it in front of the camera. So if you like our banter. You can watch this, keep it going while you're modeling. We'll keep you company while you model. Let's see if we can get some good soothing music. Oh, yeah. Oh, music? Yeah. Put, put me to sleep. 
Well, this is just because I'm just trying to get make sure I get all of the bracket and underneath mm. it. I think this is what two episodes for sure, eh, Robert? Maybe. Yeah, or edited down. Yeah. Maybe. Um, Robert's the expert. Oh, yeah, we're not experts. We're not experts. Robert. Robert's also oh. a phenomenal model builder too, by the way, guys. And you do your your uh, bases too, right, Robert? You're still working on your resume. Oh, yeah, the barbecue bases. Yes. Barbicon, yeah. barbicon bases. Yeah. So we are one and the same. Yep. That's good. Yeah, I think so. Go back to the other side. So maybe we'll do a few here and then we can stop. Yeah. And I can do the rest off camera. Sure. Because that, yeah, so we've been at it for 45 minutes. I would say you're uh, pretty well three quarters, easily three quarters of the way done. So, so I just got some, over, I just got yeah. some splatter there. So we'll, we'll fix that. We'll, we'll stop it here and then we can resume when you're, when you're ready. But it gives you an idea of the time frame that Dave's taking with his model. I would probably be about the same, I would think. Now for aircraft though, it's different. If I'm doing a, a very complex oh, pattern. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> no. Yeah. Especially for, you know, some Luftwaffe 109s or the Italian uh, aircraft, I would take much longer because the patterns are a little bit more complex on, on aircraft, in, arguably, in my opinion. So that's kind of the Finnish side. You mean like in Finland? No, no, like in Dunn. Oh, okay. For now. I don't know, kidding aside, the Finns didn't use these, did they? I don't think uh, so. No, 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 just the Germans, I think. Maybe some of their allies, maybe Romanians. Right. Maybe. maybe. Right. But I think uh, mostly uh, predominantly German. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the Germans were pretty uh, pretty picky about their... Yeah, what, what they gave to their allies. Their more esoteric stuff, yeah. So I'll just continue doing this. Maybe we'll just do a couple... That's fantastic. Can't no. forget the gun shield, right? So we'll do a That's few... That's fantastic. A few on the gun shield. And again, um, you could camouflage the crates if you wanted. Would, would they have been camouflaged or would they have bothered? They would have thrown them out, right? They were yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, they would have been disposable. Yeah. So I don't, know, I don't know if they would. And again, the viewers can correct me, but I, I don't think they would have camoed them. They would have just tossed them. Yeah. I don't think they would have bothered. That's that's neat. Makes me want to do something German now. All of this. Japanese and Italian stuff I'm doing. So I think we'll uh, I think we'll end it there for today. I, I think everybody understands. Yep. Kind of, you just kind of work. I'll just kind of work through yep. the rest of this. You don't want to hear our banter, anyways. When yeah. You spread them all. Yeah. I think you. We'll come back to when it's finished. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll do another episode on having it done, and we'll, I think the next step will be filters and and weathering, and weathering yes. which is the fun part, which is absolutely mm -hmm. the fun part. Um, yeah, so thanks uh, thanks again for, for yes. hanging out with uh, with Harvey and I. Um, and don't forget if uh, if anybody has any questions, they can either put them in the comments mm -hmm. or they can hit us at mm -hmm. uh, GarageStudioModelers at gmail dot com. Uh, we do monitor. Harvey does a better job of monitoring the emails than I do, but uh, and, and the comments. But if uh, you need to get a hold of either of us or Robert, uh, feel free to do so. We uh, you know, we love yes. to hear from you guys. And if you have any we, questions yes. or you want to see something or have a uh, you know want a clarification on something we talked about in one of the episodes, we're uh, we're we more do. than happy to. And we do it. read them. I, I we do read them. I read everything. I know Dave, you're busier than I am, but I read. I them. do try and get through them. Yes. yes. And yes. we don't we don't always respond, but we read them. Yes, we do. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Until the next time. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.